Hello, welcome to Run My Art. Today's video is another episode on soft pastels. In today's video, I'll be demonstrating uh, painting this uh, yellow pepper with soft pastel. So the first video that I did on uh, soft pastel uh, was actually a walkthrough process of uh, uh, exploring soft pastels for the first time and uh, for those who have missed that video I'll put up the link above so you can check out that video so are you curious to make a similar painting like this mm -hmm. with soft pastels then let's uh, jump right in into the step-by-step -step demonstration of how to paint this yellow pepper So I'm actually demonstrating this painting based on a reference photo that I took from Pixabay. As you can see, I'll leave the link to the picture in the description. I'll be using the Xenelius Soft Pastels of half sticks and uh, 20 colors, as well as the Kenson Mitoint paper, which is of uh, almost the A4 size uh, paper but this is 24 by 32 centimeters and the painting size is going to be half of this paper which i've already torn into half so for those who are new on this channel i am actually a watercolor artist and just recently i'm trying to explore pastel especially soft pastel as a new medium of painting so apart from the uh, drawing materials this time i have prepared a wet towel for me to clean my fingers as they get stained during the drawing process and as you can see here i have already uh, taken out the color palettes that would be used for the particular painting which is the yellow pepper and just like any other painting medium it is always advisable to pre-mix your colors as in uh, uh, watercolor or oil or acrylic paints and in this case even though it's just in a form of pastel it's best to uh, put them aside so it would uh, make your painting process much easier so as you can see here i'm quickly staining out all the uh, color palettes that i'm going to use for this drawing on a separate sheet of paper so that you can have a better view of the color palette and as i'm blending in the colors you can see i'm quickly wiping my fingers on the wet towel as well as the uh, paper towel when I switch from one color to another. Well, you might forget these steps in the beginning stage, but as you start painting, it becomes a habit. Now, starting off with the first step, which is a pre-sketch or a basic sketch of the yellow pepper. So I'm using the um, royal yellow or bright yellow to do the outline of the yellow pepper. Now, you don't have to be so thorough at this point. All um, that matters is a basic shape of the subject matter that you're going to paint. And uh, unlike in watercolor, I will have to apply or make the first wash of the subject that I'm painting. And as for pastel, it works similarly to oil painting or an acrylic where you have to draw the outlines first. So apart from the outline, I'm also roughly applying the bright yellow um, on the areas where I can uh, notice the bright yellow colors based on the reference photo. So second step, I'm going to go right in and blend those bright yellow. 
as you can see it glides quite uh, fast and easily I'm not sure how do other uh, soft pastel artists uh, make their painting um, I think some of them might uh, pre-apply several colors at one go and then uh, blend them in later but I thought since I'm new to this I just blend in one color first and over here you can see that I have decided to add on the seventh color to my color palette and uh, um, worry not this should be a normal process as you start painting you start having a better view of the painting so as you can see I'm already applying the second base color on the yellow pepper which is orange now time to blend the color in and once I start blending in the color the orange color seem to have pop up it's really striking on the subject that I'm painting and uh, at this point of time I felt that I have chosen the wrong color so I've decided to apply a thin layer of the uh, royal yellow on the orange uh, layer just to make it appear slightly lighter and more blended in with the rest of the uh, yellow color So after the blending of these two colors, at this point of time, I felt that the orange is still very striking on the subject. But it's okay, I'll come back to that later. So I'm applying the third color, which is the Indian yellow. That looks like an orange, but actually is a dull yellow. So I'm applying that quickly on the uh, right side of the subject and quickly blending that in as well as you can see I zoom in the entire you can see the entire blending process it's quite easy to blend that in and I'm quite comfortable using my finger actually to do this uh, soft pastel blending instead of any uh, blending tools so I'm working on the blending process further to make the harsh lines look softer at this point and I would say that after blending in the Indian yellow the entire subject looks much toned down and I'm glad that I have saved the painting for now so moving on once again I'm applying the royal yellow to uh, some parts of the the edge of the uh, orange outline because it seemed very uh, sharp so we want to blend that in to, to make it look much softer and the result as you can see on the video right now the entire yellow pepper looks much more toned down and I'm happy for that moving on with the next color is yellow ochre and I'm gonna apply that towards the darker areas of the yellow pepper as you can notice from the reference photo so I'm just roughly uh, sketching making lines on the dark areas and will follow with some blending process The outline of yellow ochre may look odd at this point of time but worry not as you blend in they'll somehow uh, look more toned down and that's the magic of soft pastel and maybe oil pastel as well 
and you can see here I'm trying to blend in those yellow ochre outline with the blending stomp but uh, unfortunately I realized that I need to um, put in more pigments or apply more color of the yellow ochre and uh, quick blending over here and I noticed that the entire um, during the entire blending process from time to time I tend to blow off any uh, debris or particles uh, from the pastel is just to avoid a uh, mess as you get busy with your painting and now for the highlights or the light areas of the yellow pepper I'm using the light yellow or pastel yellow and drawing the outlines for the highlight areas and at this point of time I didn't feel like using white color because that would be too bright I would say it will be best to use white in the finishing touches of your painting alright then now it's time to blend in those highlight colors and notice as you blend in the colors the highlight has somehow toned down now I'm applying the same highlights on the left hand side of the image or subject and uh, don't have to be thorough on the highlight areas I'm just trying to be very much freehand the idea is as long as you can create the impression of highlight areas according to the shape of the uh, subject and as I said earlier even though these are fine lines I am still comfortable using my finger to do the blending so I think we are almost done with the body of the yellow pepper so I'll stop for now and move on to the stem of the yellow pepper and the first color that I'm using as a base is a bright green so I'm doing a quick sketch and the second layer of the stem is a dull green or olive green and with the same color I'm trying to draw in the sepal which is leaf like structure and it's a bit challenging to draw the sepal since the pastel size is broad I think I will need to find a better way of drawing fine lines in the future and uh, you can see I'm trying to blend in the stem with the drawing stump and after blending in those two green colors so I've decided to apply some royal yellow or bright yellow on the stem as it has got some brightness on the stem despite being green and uh, once again I have to use the blending stomp since it has a more sharp tip compared to my fingers so coming back to the body of the yellow pepper I felt that I need to tone down further the middle part of the uh, subject which is the orange area by layering on some Indian yellow 
it's not too much but it's just some fine lines because as you start blending the color in it will look much uh, toned down so you don't want to apply too much of the indian yellow yeah, as you can see it's quite evident when i start blending the colors in so i think i like the look of it now so i'll leave it this way for now <laughs> So since I'm happy with the base color of the yellow pepper, so I've moved on with the 8 color for the dark areas of the pepper. And I'm using the uh, brown or burnt sienna. And I'm roughly uh, putting in the uh, fine lines on the dark areas that I notice from the uh, reference photo. Now the blending process using my fingers once again and it's still a challenging uh, step since these uh, these dark areas are uh, small areas on the yellow pepper so i'm just minimizing the movement of my finger to a very small area or narrow area while i'll do the blending and i'm finishing off the dark area blending by using the uh, blending stomp since uh, the finger blending method has left some of the uh, particles of the pastel so roughly i'm done with the yellow pepper painting and we'll come back to the uh, final touches later and move on to the background and the colors that i plan to use is black and mixed with some sophia i felt that uh, the use of two tones would make the background pop up even uh, better as compared to just using one color as in brown or black so right now i'm applying sophia as the first color for the background and since i'm working on a large area i've decided to just drag the entire pastel on the paper which saves a lot of time as well as you can see the pigment from the pastel stains the paper quite easily and as for the age of your uh, subject matter just try to be careful not to accidentally draw on the subject and the rest of the area you can just uh, drag the pastel now second color for the background as i mentioned earlier is black it's a quick view of the color and just roughly drag those colors in and i'm concentrating more on the right hand side of the painting because based on the reference photo the right hand side of the photo is the dark area as compared to the left hand area and uh, doing a quick blend in and this is very satisfying since it's a large area to work on you can happily go blending in with your finger and as i said earlier be careful with the uh, edges of the subject matter you don't want to accidentally smudge on the yellow pepper and destroy the painting since this is a very dark pigment it might be quite difficult if you get the dark pigments uh, mixed up into it and a close view of the blending process and i must say it was quite easy to blend in as i said the soft pastel textures are soft as how it has been described and there's 
very less effort I had to put in with my blending. So it was not really a tiring process. I just need to be careful on the fine lines and uh, narrow edges. So slowly try and we'll fix in those uh, leftover areas that doesn't have pigment and quickly cleaning up my fingers with the wet towel and now for the fine details I've decided to use black for the dark areas of the stem area and as mentioned earlier it is quite challenging to work on narrow areas with a thick size pastel so you want to be careful and uh, work on it patiently as I have zoomed in you can see just roughly applying the fine lines and an oops moment as I was working on the stem I didn't realize my hand has somehow stained with the background pigment so quick clean up and now blending in those black pigment with the blending stomp And now time for the highlights on the stem. So I'm using a light yellow or pastel yellow. And once again, just applying fine lines, nothing much. And a quick blend with the blending stomp. Same process for the main stem of the yellow pepper. Finally, for the finishing touches, I have decided to use the white color and quickly applying the fine lines on the stem. Same process for the body of the yellow pepper. I'm just applying some small dots and uh, fine lines where I notice is the main highlights of the pepper based on the reference photo as I mentioned uh, earlier in my uh, process that uh, white should be the last step of finishing touches And now blending in with the blending stomp. Just gently blending in the highlights. Now we are not quite done yet. As I finish the highlights, I realized that on the dark areas on the right hand side of the painting required more pigment to show the darker area of the yellow pepper and I've decided to use the burnt sienna just for the outline as you can see here it was a rough outline of the uh, shape of the yellow pepper and I'm quickly blending that in and after the blending the edges of the right hand side of the pepper looks a bit smudged and messy so I thought I'll sharpen the outline by uh, finishing it off with the 
black color pastel. So I'm going to tidy up the left hand side of the painting similar to the one I did with black color on the left. So I'm using the uh, light yellow. You might think it's not necessary uh, because it may not be very obvious on the screen. But as I'm making this painting, I could clearly see there are some smudge lines and and it requires some tidying up to do. So I've decided to stop as I'm quite happy with how the painting turned out. And uh, usually this is a battle among artists. We just don't know when to stop. But uh, I think from the screen you can tell that looks similar to the reference photo so we are done with this painting and to summarize the painting process i have used an overall of 11 different colors including white and uh, as for the blending stomp i am still uh, struggling to use it and cleaning up your stained fingers with a wet towel followed by paper towel is definitely a key step in a pastel painting. And to avoid staining your hand while you're working on your painting and making a mess, I would advise using a glassine paper. Glassine paper is a transparent acid-free paper. So you can place the uh, glassine paper on top of your painting while you work on the other areas of your painting without creating a mess or destroying your existing painting. So before I end this video, um, there's one final step uh, to be done in order to complete the pastel painting, which is using a fixative. As I've mentioned in my first video on introduction to soft pastel, um, the final uh, pastel painting has to be sealed with a fixative spray. And uh, if you don't have a fixative spray, you can use an alternative spray, which is a hair spray. So before I did the yellow pepper painting, I did this earlier painting of tomatoes. See? And uh, I have tested um, the hair spray by spraying on this particular painting. And after spraying it and uh, left it to dry, I realized that when I touch the painting, I don't see any uh, pigments sticking or staining my fingers anymore so which proves that um, the fixative spray or hairspray is an essential uh, step to seal your pastel painting so as a comparison I'll show you over here the difference between a pastel painting that has not been sealed with fixative spray versus the one which has been uh, sealed. So we'll start with the one which has been sealed with the spray. You can see, you can hear the sound and there's nothing on my fingers. Whereas for the pastel painting that has not yet been sealed with the spray. It's already staining it, so I don't want to rub again and destroy my painting. So this clearly evident that um, 
your pastel painting has to be sealed with the spray i'll show you in a while how to do so so over here i've got a normal hairspray it's nivea brand it can be any brand of hairspray and uh, just take your painting make sure this your table is empty or whichever surface you're working on is empty so that the spray uh, doesn't get onto your other things just shake the hairspray as usual it's how you use and uh, roughly spray on your Just spray thoroughly. You don't need too much, but you can see if there is some shine on your painting, it means that area has been covered. So I would advise to start spraying from the top to the bottom and uh, leave that down to dry for a few minutes. I think even five minutes would do. All right, I think my painting is dry after the uh, hairspray so let's see some water and let's see if the pigment stains on my fingers so. it doesn't stain much but because the pigment is a dark one black and dark brown so a slight staining, but overall it's, it was, uh, it's way much better than uh, what I demonstrated earlier without the spray. So I think for a very dark pigment painting, you would need to spray even more until it's fully sealed. But otherwise, it's good to go. Now this painting is complete and safe to be framed. So I hope today's video was educational and helpful to uh, my viewers. So if you'd like to see more updates from my channel, please like and subscribe to my channel and do follow me on other social media. So with this, I end my video and I hope to see you all again on this channel. Bye.